preserve your memory and favorite days. Come online to the newest craze, the digital scrapbook, the way you want it to look. With digital scrapbook kits, fun and full of wit, you log in today, you won't be able to quit. Come on over and you'll think it's the bomb in witcollection.com. Hi everyone and welcome to our video showing you how to resize your digital images so that you can get the images to the size that you want for the project that you're creating, whether it be a card or a mini album or whatever, and so that you don't have the images too, too large, as well as place a, be able to place a whole bunch of images on a sheet so that you can save a lot on ink and paper. So the program that we're going to use, and I don't know if you can see this, but this is Microsoft Word. If you are using a Windows-based computer, you will have Microsoft Word. And we wanted something that was super easy for you to use and to quickly be able to resize your images. Let's dive right in. And the, the kit that I'm using is called FQB Enchanting, in case you're interested. Uh, it is a beautiful kit with lots of flowers, beautiful detail in them, bold, rich colors. What we're gonna do is, when you have a blank sheet open, and this is open to I can just close this up and I'll show you how it works. We can go File, Open, and, sorry, File, New, and we want just a blank document, okay? And so this is an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. For those of you in the UK, Europe, and those on the metric system, you can open it up to an A4 size, and so that you know that as soon as you print it, you know you have the proper paper size. What we do is, if you go up to the top of your screen, you'll see these file, home, insert, page, layout, those words up there. We're going to choose the insert tab, and then you'll see the, the little icon for picture. So we click on that. Now it brings up this window and it says, okay, what picture do you want to insert? I'm going to navigate in my computer because I know where my folders are for all my Nitwit Collection stuff, as you can see where I'm going here. And mine are really buried. Yours won't be buried this much. Sometimes you'll have them on your desktop or wherever you decide to, to have them. And I am going to go into the Enchanting Collection and into the FQB. So our FQB, if you haven't watched the video on downloading and stuff like that, our FQB is our main item, which contains a lot of papers and a lot of elements. We have five different items that belong to a full collection. So there's additional paper packs, there's additional element packs that all coordinate, and nothing is duplicated in them, so don't think if you're purchasing them that you're going to be buying duplicates. But I'll just use the, for simplicity's sake, I'll use the FQB. Let's say I'm making a, a card or a mini album and say it's six and three quarter inches by six and three quarter inches. If I select this flower cluster because I think, okay, definitely I'm using this, it automatically click, when I click open, I selected that flower in my folder, and then I clicked open and it places it on my sheet. As you can see, if this is an eight and a half by 11 sheet, I'll just scroll down so you can see the full sheet. You can see how large that is. And you're thinking, okay, what are you guys doing creating them so big in the first place? Well, our graphics are used for many, many different uses. The large, the, because the largest use, people will use it for scrapbooking. And the largest use is usually a 12 inch by 12 inch page. So we want to create these images large enough that you could use it for that. Now, for if you're creating something smaller, obviously we want to be able to shrink this. Now, in order to do so, you've got two options on how to shrink it. The first is if you look up in the top right corner, you'll see height and width. You can click on those, and I'll just do this quickly for you. If you double click on it, it'll highlight in blue, so you can punch in whatever number you want. You think, okay, it's six and a quarter by six and a half, so, I want to make sure that these are proportionate so that I don't distort the image. I don't, I don't want it kind of weird. So let's say our height is 4, and there it goes. It has now shrunk it proportionally for you so it didn't distort the image and make it look weird or whatever. Um, so that's one way of doing it. The other way, and oh, sorry, to come back, now you know exactly how big it is. So again, going back to knowing what project you're going to create, if, you, if your card is six and three quarters by six and three quarters, well, if our width is six and a half, boy, it, it's still quite big, right? We're, we're going to want to make that smaller. So we could make that three. And again, there we go. So it, see now how it sh also shrunk the height to 2.89?
it has done it proportionally for you. So you never have to worry about it actually being uh, uh, distorting the image for you. Now, coming back to the image, if you know how large your project is, this is going to be an appropriate size as an example for three inches. You will know, depending on, on your project, how big or how small you want that image. So here we go. Now we have this image. The next thing we want to do is I want to be able to move it around on my page. If you see, there's a little icon with arrows on it and you can't really move it around. So in order to do that, you go up and you see wrap text. Click on the little arrow on the wrap text and you'll see the word tight. So we highlight that, we put our cursor over it so it highlights it in yellow so we know that that's what we're going to select. And we put push our left mouse button once to select it. Now it's allowed me, I can place this image anywhere on the page that I want. And that's important because we're going to want to add a whole bunch of images to the one page. So let's add another image. So we go back up to insert. We choose, we hover our mouse over the icon for picture. It comes up in yellow. We left click on it and it brings up this window again. So now I can choose another image that I want to place in here. Let's say we want to place this journal card. So we select OK. Again, it places our journal card in it for us. Now again, you can see that going up here, this is five inches by 3.92 inches, so call it five by four. Again, quite large for what you're thinking. Well, let me show you the second way that you can resize things, and that is by placing your mouse cursor. You'll see these little dots in each of the corners, okay? And what you do is you place your cursor over this dot, and you see how the arrow has now changed to a white arrow and it's got opposing little arrow point points on each end. If I press down my left mouse button, you'll see it now it has a cross has appeared on my screen. And then while holding my left mouse button down, I just drag it, my mouse, so that I can make it smaller. And as soon as I let it go, now I've made the image smaller. Now I can look up in this right corner again and I can see that what my height and width are. I can still use this to adjust if I've made it too small or too large you can just click the buttons and it automatically does it for you. You can see how simple that is. But I can adjust it to whatever size is exactly the right size for my project. When I'm done adjusting the size, again, I have to go up to wrap text, click on it, highlight the word tight so that it comes up in yellow, click tight, and again, now I can move this all over the place. So I can place it anywhere on my page so that that way I can print out one single page. Again, <clears throat> I know this may be a little little bit more than you wanted but let's just do another one here so let's go back to insert picture and then we scroll down let's choose a tag here so I highlight I left click on that tag I click the insert button at the bottom and boom it comes up on my screen for me again again it's a little large so I'll just use the the cursor and the mouse in order to resize I'll shrink it down and think you can kind of see proportionally now what I'm doing, where you can see how things are, are working and, and what, what size something. So you, you don't have to be exact unless there is something like, like this item that you maybe wanted exact. But you kind of are getting the idea where proportionally that's probably about the right size that I would want to use at. Once I'm done adjusting, again, I go up to wrap text. I place my cursor just over the top of it. It highlights in yellow. I click it once with my left mouse button. I highlight the word tight. I click it again. So now you can see this is the basic and easy version of how to resize elements and you can see I can keep adding elements to this page and pictures uh, until I fill up the page. Very, very simple to do. Uh, this way when you print out the one page you can then fussy cut these out and uh, or use your Cricut if you guys have a Cricut or a Cameo and use your cutting machines and you have all of your elements on one page or possibly two depending on how, how large your project is but that way it's going to save you a lot of money in ink and in uh, actual paper. So the last thing I'm going to show you here in terms of the, the beginner or the, the simplistic way of doing something is you're also going to, you, first thing you want to remember is to leave yourself a white edge around when you're placing all your elements in. You'll see that I didn't tuck this element way up to the top and go right to the edge of the page. The reason for that is your printer, uh, unless you're really good with your printer and you know that your printer allows you the option of printing borderless, which means it's not recognizing that there's any like white edge around the edge of your paper. Unless you're advanced like that, 
it's going to cause you problems if you have your image placed right to the edge. Your printer is going to, as soon as you try and print, it's going to say, your image is too large. Like, I need to shrink your image down so that that way it'll print on the page. Well, what it's going to do then is all these sizes that you've taken so much care and attention to make, it's actually going to print out a slight bit smaller for you, which is not what you want. You've sized these to what, what image size you want them at. So just make sure to leave uh, a space of about at least, say, a quarter of an inch or something like that. Leave yourself a little bit of space here so that that way you know that it won't come up with that message when you try to go to print it. So that's that. Now, in terms of printing your papers, let's just go into the file for a second. And let's just call it the big floral. So when you, let me go back so that I can show you what I've done here. When you double left click on the item, so one, two, it brings it up in what they call Windows Photo Viewer. So again, this paper is created in a 12 inch by 12 inch size, which is going to be way too big to print on your printer. And the pattern may be a little bit too big for you. You may think, okay, if I think roughly of an eight and a half by 11 inch like square, wow, those flowers are really big. It's, it's a little bigger than I want. If you go up to the top left of, your, of this window, you'll see the words file, print, email, burn, that kind of stuff. If you click on print, it brings up this little menu. And again, we want to say print. So we left click on print. Now it brings up this window and it says, okay, here's the printer you're going to use in case you have more than one. I just have the one. It's going to say your paper size is eight and a half by 11. It automatically shrinks that paper to an eight and a half by 11. Now, again, you're going to have it where it's right to the very edge. So, you know, you're, you're going to want to watch that in terms of how the error message that you're going to get where it's going to shrink it a little bit even more for you because it's going to say, I can't print all the way to the border if your printer doesn't have that option. But you can also resize it here on the side. It's going to give you the option of making it a 4x6 paper, a 5x7 paper, an 8x10. And if you want to print it as a full page, I'd, I'd recommend you select the 8x10 because then, again, you get that white border around it. You know exactly what you're getting. Uh, and uh, lastly, what I want to show you in here is... I'm going to show you another tutorial. There'll be a second video showing you how to print and how to get the best print for you. So I won't go through all that here. But if, um, sorry, this is an, the easiest way to print out the papers for you so that as you're crafting with your projects, it's a super easy way. You can just press the print key at the bottom here and it would be whirring away and printing on my printer. So I hope that you found that informative and it found a very easy way in order to print the papers as well as to resize the elements so that they're the right size for your project and also to print right out of here. If you want to stay tuned to this video, I'm going to continue on and show you a little bit more advanced things to do. Uh, if you think, no, nope, that's given me everything I need to know, you can stop the video now. Thanks for staying tuned for the advanced portion of this resizing video. What I want to show you here is if you're really comfortable with the resizing already, I want to show you how you can actually write some text on these tags if you want, or actually place another element in front so that you can, in essence, create a new element for yourself if that's the look that you were going for. So before you even print it, you won't have to worry about layering things on top after the fact once it's all printed. So let's start out with a text part if you wanted to write on this tag as an example. What we're going to do is, we'll just go back to home so we have a starting point here. We're going to go up to the insert tab and we'll click the insert tab and you'll see up here where it says text box. If you click on the text box, you're going to see you have a whole bunch of these options come up. You don't want to choose any of these standard options because what's going to end up happening is you're going to have some, uh, the background of it is going to be white. So obviously you can see over on the tag, this is a little more off-white, there's a little bit of a, a pattern to the paper. We don't want to erase that. We just want to make it look natural. So we're going to go to the bottom here where it says draw text box. So we're going to highlight that with our mouse by hovering over it. We're going to left click it. And now I get this funny looking cross that comes up for me. What I'm going to do is I'll just go to anywhere on the screen and I am going to play or I can go right over top of this if I want. I am going to place the cursor there, press and hold my left mouse button and just draw a little area. So as you can see, it has created a white box for us and, and something we don't want to do. So the first thing we want to do is go up to Shape Fill 
and we want to choose no fill. So now you can see how it's clear behind. There's no more white. We also want to go to shape outline and choose no outline. We So now you see the little dotted border. If I hadn't have done that step, you'd end up with like an actual little, like a black border around it. And we don't want any of that to show. The last thing I want to do is to uh, go ahead and write some text in here. So let's just say my best friend. So uh, not the nicest in terms of, we can, and we can see how I have kind of written over the top, so it's a little hard to see. Let's make this so that we can move this text box around. And we do that by going up to wrap text box again, just like we did with the images. We click on that and we highlight the word text, or sorry, tight, and we left click on it. So now I can move this around and not worry about it. So let's just move it out because it's in behind and I'll show you how to do that in a second here. So my best friend, that's what I want to write on this tag. Now in order to change the standard font and to actually make it look nice, like it flows within the kit that you're, that you're working with here, let's take our left, our, our cursor, press and hold your left mouse button and drag it across it so that it highlights that text. Basically that means that I'm going to be changing that, that little portion. You'll see the little box that came up above it, which lets me know that, okay, I can change the first left box is the font. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, when you call this up, when you click on the little arrow, it's going to call up all the fonts that you have in your computer. You don't have to worry. Microsoft Word has given you a lot. Um, you're going to see I have a mountain more. But you're going to scroll through until you see something and you think, you know, I kind of probably want something in more of a script. Here I have one called Amazon BT. I'll click on that and we can see what it's done. Um, it's actually quite small here. So let's just go and choose our font size, which is the one right next door. It's at font size of 11. Uh, when I click on the arrow, you can see it brings up that little flyout menu that gives me all the different sizes. If I just move my mouse over those without clicking on it, you can kind of see exactly how large it's making it. So it's kind of nice before you actually commit to it and press your left mouse button, you can just slide this back and forth and you can see what it, what's actually happening here. Let's choose 18. So that's about the right size I want it to be. Left mouse click on it. I now have this in the font that I want and in the size that I want. So if I'm good with that, I can just click anywhere on the page and all the rest of the stuff disappears. Okay. Now click back on the words again in order to bring up our box so that that way we can move that around. I'm going to move this up here and you're going to see how it disappeared. What's happening there is it's saying just based upon the order of, and sequence that I've made things, it's actually behind the tag. I need to know how to bring it back forward again. So when you go up to the top, you'll see drawing tools and the word format underneath. Click on that word there. Now go over to the right side of your screen on the top of these icons and you'll see something called bring forward. Click on that and scroll to uh, go to the very bottom of this little flyout menu that came up and it says bring in front of text. So we click that and now you see my text is in front of my tag that I'm trying to write on and so everything is actually as it should be. Now you can see that my best friend eh, that didn't really work so well. It's kind of hanging off the end. I don't want to shrink the text size. I just want it to actually be underneath. Well we can edit this by again place your cursor just in between best and friend, kind of in that space area. Left click with your mouse and press your enter key. Now you see we've moved friend down below, so it's created a new line for you. So again, I can move this around, so I can have this written anywhere on this tag that I want. So I'm just gonna click off of anywhere on the screen here, so that that way, oops, uh, so that you can now see there is your finished tag. So that when you print it out, you've got a font that works. It's placed on exactly where you want. So when I go to print this page, you're already completely done with that. You don't have to write on it with a pen. You don't have to try and, and maybe your printing is like mine and it looks like a doctor's scrawl. You've actually got a fully built tag for yourself. And this is why I've called it the advanced portion. I'm going to show you one other thing. And that is in order to, like I said before, say you really like this flower element but you saw something else inside the, the kit that you thought, okay, you know what? I actually, when I was scrolling through that FQB, uh, and let me just go back into that story. I was actually putting the video together, a portion of the video together here while I was waiting for it to all come through. 
Let's go back into the enchanting collection, which is right here, and back into the FQB. And because when you purchased it, you kind of had to look through it and you kind of saw the elements. There's little buttons, uh, you know, there's uh, these labels that you could put in. There's all kinds of things that you could do. I was thinking this enchanting word tag, I'll just call it up large for you. Wouldn't that look nice over this flower cluster? Wouldn't that be nice to have that written on the bottom? And again, I can do all this before I even print this thing out. So everything is ready to go for me. So how we're going to do this is again, just like putting other images on this page. We're going to go up to the insert tab at the top, click it, and we're going to insert a picture again, just like we had previously. So I'll scroll down. I'll say, I'll choose that enchanting word by left clicking on it and highlighting it. I'll choose insert. And here it goes. It brought it up. Now again, because you're already advanced, you'll see that it's behind. Okay. Uh, first things first, let's go up to wrap text again and choose tight. So that way we know that we already can move this around and do whatever we want with it. So if I place this right up over that flower cluster, and this is why I like to shrink things this way rather than using the height and width up in the top here, is again, I put my mouse over the corner of the box and I get that white opposing arrows, which means I'm in the mode where I can resize this. I press and hold my left mouse button and I just shrink. Okay, so again, a little big so I can shrink it a little bit more. And there I am. Uh, probably shrink a little bit more here. There I am. Now I'll just click anywhere on the page just to get that box off so I can have a really good look at it. How nice does that look, right? So now when it goes to print, it's thinking that this was already one big element, that it was already done for you. But because you're advanced, look at you moving along, you now have this as one solid piece so that it'll print out exactly like you're seeing here with the enchanting over the top, with the my best friend's words on the top, and you have exactly what you want to craft with before you even print. I hope you found the, now there's a lot more other things that you can do in here, but I think we've advanced far enough. If you have questions or you're working in Microsoft Word and you're wondering, or you're working in uh, Max Pages, uh, Pages again is, is the name of, of it for Mac. If you're working in them and you're like, oh, boy, I wish I could do this, or I wish I could do that, send us an email through our store, I'm happy to help. Our service doesn't end with you purchasing a product and making sure you got it. I'm happy to answer questions and, and help you guys out. I want you to become proficient and feel comfortable with this so that you see the value in using the digital goods where, where you can actually accomplish what it is you're trying to accomplish. We all started somewhere. None of us were born with this knowledge. So it's maybe this is just your time to learn. Thanks for watching the video and please tune in to the next video with how to simply print and how to get the best print from your printer in order to make sure you get these nice bold colors and the details uh, so that you are printing on a good quality paper and actually getting the results and the beauty that you see on your screen when you open up these kits. Thanks again for watching. Talk to you soon.